topic is affirmative action. The resolution is that we should reinforce the affirmative action policy eliminated by Proposition 209. Affirmative action is a policy that takes positive steps to increase the representation of women and minorities in areas of employment, education, and business from which they have been historically excluded. In November of 1966, Proposition 209 was passed with 54% of the popular vote, which banned the use of race and gender preferences in state university admissions, employment, and contracting. Without affirmative action, women and minorities have a difficult time competing in a discriminating world that favors white males. The debate will offer many opposing viewpoints on the subject, and our main focus will be affirmative action in colleges. Being on the affirmative side, I will explore the resolution using three supporting claims, those of significance, inherency, and solvency. My first claim is eliminating affirmative action in California has led to a heightened impact of widespread discrimination. Second, that Proposition 209 harms minorities' opportunities to further their education at a higher level. And third, affirmative action is still necessary to ensure equal opportunities for qualified minorities and women. Again, my significant claim is that eliminating affirmative action in California has led to a heightened impact of widespread discrimination. Eliminating affirmative action is resegregating higher education. Minorities are constantly looked down upon and not given equal opportunities because of their race. How is society to be truly diverse and tolerant if some levels of power and influence are close to all but whites? What kind of place is it where a hardworking person can't get accepted to a university because the campus prefers whites? People come across these questions, come across questions such as these quite frequently because everyone is still, everyone still wants to know the answer. Chang Lin Tian, former chancellor of the University of California in Berkeley, claims racial divisions still exist in society, and including race as a factor in admission decisions is one way to ensure that promising minority students have access to higher education. When schools are not diverse, it creates a hostile environment which makes it hard for students to gain the proper knowledge. According to Donald D. Geering, who wrote the book Responding to the New Affirmative Action Climate, if affirmative action is, is dismantled, it will certainly make our job of maintaining a multicultural campus environment much harder. Our nation is already undergoing difficult problems, and my multiculturalism should not be one of them. At this point, we should be working together, not tearing each other down. My inherency claim is that Prop 209 harms minorities' opportunities to further their education at a higher level. Since the passing of Proposition 209, there have been less and less minorities accepted to California universities. While the affirmative action was still in effect, many stated that they felt the policy granted them the opportunity to move forward with their life. However, now they feel they are being pushed back. According to Robert C. Scott, who offered his viewpoints on affirmative action to the book Discrimination, all those studies have shown, once admitted, minority students perform just as well as their non-minority peers, not one of the 196 African-American student applicants was admitted to the medical school at the University of California, San Diego. And at the University of California, Berkeley, and the University of California, Los Angeles, law school admissions for African-Americans fell more than 80%. From this piece of evidence, one can clearly see that whites currently possess the majority of spots available in universities. The fact that not one of the qualified 196 African American students did not get accepted is outright discrimination. <coughs> Another point I would like to make is that some, but not all of California public high schools can take advanced placement courses, which gives them two advantages. One, they increase their grade point average because a grade in an AP course counts one point higher than a regular course grade, and two, they can test out of selected college courses if they pass the exam. A closer look at AP courses in California public high schools highlights why this is relevant, relevant to the affirmative action debate. Certain high schools offer as many as 30 AP courses, whereas other schools offer only one or two. Some don't offer any, period. Schools with larger proportions of minority schools are less likely to offer AP courses. 
according to Harry P. Pagan, who is president of the Thomas Revere Policy Institute and a professor of public policy at Claremont Graduate University in California, universities place students from predominant minority schools at an automatic disadvantage because they have neither the higher grade point averages nor the opportunity to take courses that present the intellectual challenges of AP courses. Some UC campuses consider the number of AP courses taken throughout high school education when going over the admission process. Therefore, the elimination of affirmative action through Proposition 209 has set minorities at a huge disadvantage when it comes to furthering their education. They need a policy to help make up for those limitations. My third and final supporting claim is that of solvency, which is affirmative action is necessary to ensure equal opportunities for qualified minorities and women. It is fair and equitable to consider race and ethnicity as one factor among many in admitting qualified youth to highly competitive universities. Again, Chang Ling Tian from Berkeley argues that affirmative action programs benefit all students because they foster diversity and racial tolerance on camp college campuses. We should not think that just because affirmative action made a difference at some point that it is no longer needed. It will be needed as long as inequalities exist. African Americans and minorities have endured a lot of pain over the years that they did not deserve, and it's time to start seeing them as equals and making a difference in the world. Reinforcing the affirmative action policy will do just that because they will be given the opportunities to further their education and make something out of themselves. Affirmative action policy is the only way to guarantee some measure of diversity on the nation's most select campuses. Without a policy like this, no change will ever be made because there will be no force behind it. Efforts to achieve diversity in higher education must begin earlier in the academic careers. We cannot just simply recognize them when they are going in, when they are trying to go into higher education. What the future holds is still up for debate but diversity should not have to undergo problems just because of Proposition 209. The following debate will offer opposing viewpoints on whether or not the affirmative action policy eliminated by Prop 209 should be reinforced.